Hello everyone, today we're continuing our discussion of neoclassical growth theory. Specifically, this comes from Econ 201, Macro 1, Session 3 and 4. Previously, we were speaking about the production function. The second very important part of the model is something called the investment requirements. With the investment requirements, I'm going to start simply by showing you what it looks like before going into a more detailed explanation. We're going to be using the same set of axes that we did for the production function because ultimately the curves are all going to end up on the same graph in order to be able to show the complete model. Can you remember what was on each of the axes? On the horizontal axis, we're measuring the capital to labor ratio. Remember that that is designated with a small or lowercase k and it's measuring the amount of capital stock per person. On the vertical axis, we're measuring output per person. And if you recall, output per person is shown by a lowercase y. Now, the investment um, requirement is a very important component of neoclassical growth theory. And this is because what we're aiming to show is how an economy can go about increasing the amount of output per person. One of the ways in which an economy can increase the amount of output being produced per person is if that economy was investing in more capital stock per person. In other words, it's through the investment in capital stock per person that output per person can increase. If you recall, that was what our production function in mathematical notation was showing us. On the right hand side, if we increase the amount of capital stock per person, we're able to increase the amount of output per person. How do we get more capital stock per person? Well, we need to invest. So what does our investment requirement look like? Well, there are two important factors that we need to consider when we think about how much investment per person an economy is going to need in order to be able to not only maintain their current investment, but also to increase it over time. So those two important things are firstly the population growth rate, which we will need to consider, and the depreciation rate of capital. Together, the depreciation rate of capital and the population growth rate influence our investment requirements. So the population growth rate is shown by the lowercase n. In other words, that's telling us the percentage by which the population changes each year, and lowercase d is the depreciation rate of capital. You might recall that when we talk about depreciation, we're really talking about the fact that over time, capital equipment loses value. It becomes obsolete in some cases, and in other cases, because it's capital stock, because it's phys physical machinery, it wears out over time. It becomes um, old and broken and needs to be replaced. So together, those two things will determine the investment requirements. At a very minimum, we are going to need in any economy in a certain amount of investment annually in order to just keep the amount of capital stock per person in the economy constant. Why? Well, because every year the population is growing. So we are going to need to account for the fact that there will be more and more people entering into the labor market who require machinery to work with. And if we don't increase the amount of investment that we undertake, those people are not going to have sufficient capital stock to work with, and as a consequence, the capital to labor ratio will fall. Similarly, with respect to depreciation, if we don't replace old, worn out, or obsolete machinery, the capital to labor ratio in the economy will decline. So at a very minimum, there's a certain amount of investment that is required to maintain various capital to labor ratios. So let's see what that would look like graphically. If we start off with zero capital stock per person, well then there's nothing to maintain. If we don't have any capital stock per person, we won't get any output per person. But to maintain zero capital stock per person, we don't need any investment per person. However, if the capital to labor ratio increased to K1, we would need a certain amount of investment per person. Let's say R1. 
in order to maintain that particular capital stock per person. And as the capital to labor ratio increased, let's just say that it was K2, we might need even more investments per person in order to maintain that higher capital to labor ratio. So let's just draw these in. If we have capital to labor ratios equal to K1, then we need R1's worth of investment per person. If the capital to labor ratio is K2, we would need R2's worth of investment per person, I2. And if the capital to labor ratio is, say, I, K, um, K3, then we would need R3's worth of investment per person in order to maintain that capital to labor ratio. So what is determining the slope of this investment requirement line? Well, it's the population growth rate and the depreciation rate of capital. So the population growth rate together with the depreciation rate of capital influence the amount of investment per person that is needed to maintain each of these different capital to labor ratios. In addition though, given a population growth rate equal to n percent per annum, and given a depreciation rate of capital equal to d percent per annum, what we can also see is that if an economy started off with capital to labor ratios equal to k1, if they wanted to increase the amount of capital stock per person that they had, they would need to increase the amount of investment per person that they were undertaking. So this investment requirement line is positively sloped. We need more capital stock per person, and therefore in order to get that additional capital stock per person, we would need to increase the amount of investment per person that was taking place. Similarly, if the capital to labor ratio, if we needed that to increase from K2 to K3, then the way to do that, given the population growth rate of N and given a depreciation rate of capital D, in order for us to increase the capital to labor ratio with those population growth rates and with that depreciation rate of capital, the amount of investment required would need to increase up to R3. So this investment requirement line tells us not only how much investment per person is required to maintain each different capital to labor ratio, but it also tells us that if we wanted to increase the amount of capital per person or increase the capital to labor ratio, we would need greater amounts of investment per person to take place.